Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll officially say good morning. It's nine o'clock. Welcome to One Line Cups. Let's see. Oh yeah, we're making we're making fun things happen this morning. So, folks, welcome to One Line Cups. Let's uh, let's have a seat. So let's kick things off. Um, let's see. We we've got a little bit of a slide deck, but the the stuff that I'll just share, I'll try and not necessarily make it quick. Let me actually. You know what? There's been a wreck on a highway. I saw an accident when I was passing by. I was heading, I was heading west. Uh, probably not something that would take over the whole thing, but I'm sure that's going to slow stuff down. So with all these kinds of crazy things that are going on in the world and our traffic and I don't know, health and who knows what else we might be having on our minds, maybe we should just slow it down for a second. Let's maybe just give ourselves a moment of grace and say, hey, whoa, I'm glad that we made it here. <laughs> I'm glad that you made it here. Happy Let's celebrate some happy oh, things. Yeah. You know what? Are we going to do that now? Let's do that. Let's right do now. that now. We're, we're changing things up. Oh my heavens! Jen Molinix, please stand up. Aww. 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 Okay, it's not official yet, but it probably will be by the end of the day. Uh, Jen Molinix yes. is a oh, new yeah. member of Equiseek's board. Yay! That's so, pretty good news. If we have nobody other, else has got good news. I tell you what, if we have other good news, we we can save that for the end. Just kind of think, and not necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be business. It could be I, you know, I had the best cup of coffee this morning, or you know, my daughter did this, or whoever did something else. Who knows what that is? But let's share some good news when we're when we're done with our presentation today. I will run through this thing because um, we've got it on screen and we like to do it. First of all, you may have heard that we are, we've um, launched a new platform. I would like to say, and, and I think I'm saying it because it's true, that the people who are part of this team, we really helped make sure that this platform is, is usable by the wide majority of different, uh, different one million cups places across the country. As part of that, we want to make sure that we're using it and we encourage you to check in. You will see there's a couple of these around and we can spread them around. If you, there's a QR code on here, if you want to just use your, uh, one of those devices that most of us have in our pockets, take a picture of that. <clears throat> you can go in there and check in. Um, how many, how many pens, how many, uh, how many notebooks have we given out? Oh, maybe. Because people don't, I have one collect them. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I have a maybe less than 10. That's and right. I have a whole box. Yeah. And, and I, I, I know I'm eligible for the pen, but I'm really holding out for that book. But I'm one of those people who's just, I have not always signed in. So I encourage you to sign in. If for whatever reason you don't like QR codes because gosh knows, um, I don't know. I can't, I can't come up with anything bad about QR like codes right now. What's that? They don't like randomization. They don't like randomization. Oh my heavens, new technology. Order. Boy, this is, yeah, this is what, 15, 20 years old. It'll never take catch on. If you don't like that, just go to 1milliancups.com slash Albuquerque. We used to have a short, you know, 1mcabq.com. That doesn't work quite yet. You know, we're hopeful that we'll get that back. However, onelycups.com slash Albuquerque, relatively simple. That'll bring you where you want to go, and they'll give you an option to check in for what it is we're doing. All right. The mission of Online Cups is to lower the barrier of access to education and support for entrepreneurs um, in our community. There's another aspect here. Is it on here? Yeah, connect, connection for all new and aspiring entrepreneurs throughout the United States. It's really about, yeah, the connections we have. Oh, well, we've got some, some real pros in the room. We've got people who provide, we're part of organizations that provide services, training, um, et cetera, for entrepreneurs. But in addition to that, some of the people who are most knowledgeable about the kinds of things that you're going through or have in their network the kinds of folks that you need to speak to about any challenges or opportunities you face, that's in the room, that's in the community. So, you know, Albuquerque, New Mexico, it's like two degrees of separation for almost anybody, right? So if you've got a challenge with your business, we want this to be one of the places you know you can come. You can talk with one of the hosts. There's a number of other fine people in the audience that i um, glad to introduce you to. Um, <clears throat> who can help your business move on? So that connection thing is very important. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this last 45 minutes. And I'm sorry. So I'll, I'll speed it up a little bit. It's a national and local mission. I talked a little bit about the local mission, but it's also a national effort. Uh, Kaufman Foundation has been um, the leading organization about research into entrepreneurship in the United States. And this is one of the things they've done in order to help encourage 
that entry level. How do people get to be part of entrepreneurial communities? How do they get um, to become part of the pipeline of access to the kinds of services they're going to move entrepreneurs for? We are that one little dot. Actually, you know, it's the most important dot in New Mexico. <laughs> or the only dot, depending on how you look at it. Um, however, we're part of this national network of different organizations. One of the reasons we mention this is because I'll single out Paul over here. Paul's been to 17, I'm just lying, 17 different locations around the country. All right, six. He's been to six different locations around the country talking with people about his company. You know, does your company, you know, are the markets, are the kinds of people you need to talk to? Are they in New Mexico? Are they in some other place in the world? You know, if you're in med tech, health tech, maybe you want to go to Houston. Maybe you want to go to, you know, FinTech. I don't know, maybe you want to go to Nashville. There's a lot of different places around the country that have a high level of expertise in some of these different domains. One of the reasons we're part of this national network and one of the reasons why we wanted, thought it was important to have this here is because we wanted to have folks have access to that. Let's see, presentations, not pitches. We talk about this a lot. I don't know who in this room likes to be sold to. It's like, sign me up, come to my door, sell me solar or whatever the heck it is. <laughs> sell me that thing. Very few of us are in that basket. What we prefer here in, uh, in Albuquerque, and, and you know, there's a variety of different styles that our different presenters have, but what we try to get to is something that's more of, tell us the story, you know, who are you? Why was it important you started this company? How does it work? Give us enough information so we can have a real conversation face-to-face -face among other people in the community. That gets us on your side. That gets us to say, you know, this may not be right for me, but I know somebody who's going to like this, or I know somebody who can help solve your problem. So presentations, not pictures. I already talked about authentic uh, connections. Networking isn't bad, but you know, networking first, the transactional kind of networking, that's not really what we're, more, what we're about, we're really more about those relationships. All right, let's see. Oh boy, what can our community do to help you? That's the question we always ask. Um, it's a question we continue to ask, whether it's at the end of a presentation or if it's here in the room. If there are things that you see that we can do as a community to improve things, maybe it's not the role of us here with One Man Cups, but maybe that's something we can get to. We can talk to some of the other people who, who are doing that kind of work so we can help make that happen. Um, it takes collaboration. It doesn't necessarily take over one million cups of coffee. We're not asking anyone to have one million cups of coffee. Although if someone does, I think we've got a great, great social media campaign that we can launch. However, we're, we're not, we're not <laughs> encouraging you to do that. The main thing I want to say is you don't have to do it. <clears throat> All right, apply to present. It's relatively easy, yes. See, we changed it over 1millioncups.com slash Albuquerque. If you go to that site, it takes maybe five to eight minutes, depending on how much you want to think about the presentation and get involved. There's some other resources that are available there to help learn about how to present uh, that are also useful. The other thing you can do is talk with one of the uh, talk with one of the organizers. And we'll kind of we'll let you know, you know, does this feel like it's a good presentation? Is there an angle that might help you present? Speaking of the organizers, we've got Mr. Paul Sauter, we've got Lisa Atkins, we've got myself, uh, Adam. Oh, Sonia's online. Sonia's online somewhere. She's <laughs> she's somewhere in this, this nest of things that we don't see right now. So some of the organizers are here in the room. One of us is online, and we're here to help you. We're here to help you connect with folks. There's always room for other people to help either as organizers or in other capacities with, uh, with the organization. Come see one of the organizers, and we'll uh, try and point you in the right direction. Let's see, we're thankful to our sponsors. We've been at FAPCHI for, and this I'm not lying about, we, over eight years. We're, we're kind of like eight years and four months. That's a pretty long time, you know, for, for any kind of organization. <laughs> Jason yeah. Collin in the house, Jason yeah. Collin photography, yeah. making us look good. He's got a picture. He also does these like headshots and other real, you know, corporate yeah. work and drone work. Um, but, uh, uh, yes, you have to be on a horse, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, check out uh, check out what what's your, what's your main place to post? I mostly catch it on LinkedIn. Sometimes is it Yeah, JasonCollinPhotography.com is a great place to learn more. <laughs> more than organized. Let's see. I'm not sure if uh, Miriam is online with us today, but she helps with uh, Creamer and some other elements. Foundation for Sustainable Living. Thank you very much. 
is the coffee sponsor for us. So uh, we always guarantee that you've got at least one cup of coffee, probably two or three, an event of custom software. There is, there's a whole mess of donuts out there today. Uh, and, and I'm not blaming anyone. <laughs> I'm just saying that we all have responsibility. Okay, okay. Let's see, and also in Vive Solutions are gonna be coming in uh, in the near future with some other, you know, maybe depending on how you look at it, more healthy options. I've talked way too much. Let's see, Sorry. events and activities, we'll do that later. I'm just thankful that everyone's here today. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'll ask right now, how many people in the room are entrepreneurs, consider yourselves entrepreneurs? All right, fantastic, fantastic. How many people, this is the first time visiting? No, okay, okay, that's good. All right, that helps us with our kind of check-in and some of the reports we have to do, but I will hand it off. Are you gonna introduce our speaker? For today? I sure am. Excellent. So, here. All right. Thank you very much. Ladies, come on up. Share my screen. I'm so excited about today's presenters. Um, they've been here before. Hey, Cake Skin Products. Love their products. They're amazing. And they're here today to give us an update. Um, Katie and Christina with Hey, Cake Skin Care Products. And uh, give us an update and tell us how they're doing. I use their products, of course, you know, yes, she looks yeah. gorgeous. <laughs> ah. <laughs> we think so. And Sonia on there also uses Sonia products. Uses them, yes, you can also advocate for us as well. And which button? Wait, wait, wait. Let's see this one. Uh, forward, the the her, perfect. All and right. Sometimes I, when I click in the screen to let someone in, I screw up your advancement. So I'll try, I'll try not to touch my computer. Oh, that's fine. We can dance. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Katie Olk, and I, it's my honor today to give you an update on our company, KK Skin Products. So we are proudly disrupting the skincare market. So one of the things, oh, let's see if I can actually work this. No, it's good work. There we go. All right, perfect. So just really quickly about Christina and I, we are the co-founders of k, &K Skin Products. Again, my name is Katie Olk, and I'm the CEO, but more importantly, I'm um, the one who has been formulating the products for the last 10 years. So in 2011, I started, um, actually, I just moved to Taos, New Mexico, started formulating products for my own skin conditions. I had severe eczema from head to toe, um, cystic acne, you name it, I had it. And so I was tired, I was embarrassed, and I was just um, looking for something that worked. And so Taos, as most of you know, is where they live and breathe holistic um, recipes, formulations, way of life. And so that's when I really started learning about carrier oils. And it was through those, um, just my digging, made hundreds of different formulations. Some of those epic fails, but those epic fails were able to um, allow me to handcraft and formulate products for different results. So I really am able to um, formulate uh, accordingly based off of what you need using only carrier oils, essential oils, and natural oils. So that's my background. Um, I'm Dr. Christina Trujillo. I have a PhD in molecular biology from New Mexico State. Go Aggies, any Aggies? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was a professor and researcher at UNM for over 10 years. I left UNM about four years ago because I really wanted to get breakthrough discoveries out of the lab and into the real world. So that's exactly what we're doing at K&K. So in the skincare industry, one of the biggest trends is that consumers care about ingredients more than they ever have in the past. So today's consumer, they want clean. They want all natural. They don't want harsh chemicals. They don't want artificial preservatives. And we absolutely have all of that in our products. But to be quite honest, all natural, it's a dime a dozen. Everybody's doing it. Um, so what exactly sets us apart? Well, for us, all natural, that's just our starting point. On top of all natural, we have hardcore breakthrough science. So our signature serum, our BioVarix serum, starts with a base of Katie's pure premium oils that she's perfected over the last 10 years. But into that base, we put a molecule that we've trademarked as BioVarix. And BioVarax is really special to me because 
I used to work with it in my own cancer research in my own lab. Mm. So it didn't work out quite so well for cancer, unfortunately, but it had some amazing antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties, which makes it have some amazing results on skin. So this BioVarX has over 10 years of peer-reviewed published studies to support this. But in addition to those studies, before we ever released the serum to the public, we did a year of our own studies. And the results actually even surprised us, to be honest. <laughs> I should point it here. No, you're, you're probably fine. Okay. Yeah. So, we, need to so yeah. we first started testing it on wrinkles. And this is only after 30 days. And as you can see, this gentleman, his wrinkles are almost completely gone. I actually think he looks 10 years younger. Um, we tried it on acne scars. These are actually my own acne scars that I had since I was a teenager. And after 90 days, you can see that they're actually starting to fill in the deep divots. So the skin is actually rejuvenating. And then finally, we tested on stretch marks. And to be honest, we were pretty skeptical because we thought nothing can take away stretch marks. Yeah. But you can see in this picture, after only 90 days of treating with a biomeric serum, you can see what astounding results we got. And so because it worked so well, we filed for a patent for the use of BioVarX in cosmetic applications. Um, right now, the patent is pending and making its way through the US patent office. So what does that mean as a business? How do we make money? How do we get our customers? And how do we reach a new audience? Well, first, let me tell you a little bit about the product. So Christine, you talked about our signature item, which is our BioVarex serum. It is the only product that we have that's using that molecule. The other products are complementary products, so products that help you achieve those maximum results. The gentleman you had seen earlier were using three products. He was using the refreshing facial cleanser, the BioVarex serum, and our daily moisturizer. That's it. Three minutes in the evening, one minute in the morning. Super easy, real results. We have other products like a night repair wrinkle serum because we'd like you to alternate serums with BioVarex. And then for the rest of the body, for me, my eczema, um, head to toe, this is what you use when you get out of the bath or shower. All of our products are pure and concentrated. We do not formulate with water, so then that way we can stabilize with vitamin E. <laughs> and so all of our products are actually emphasized to use with water, but they are pure and concentrated. And so we don't use water in any of our products and they're all oil-based. Currently we have five products that we sell. How do we sell that? Well, first it's through e-commerce. And so um, we launched in 2019. And one of the things we found early in 2020 was COVID. And so what we had to do was just focus on e-commerce. And that was our number one platform. So we pivoted and just looked at e-commerce. It went really well for us. And so now we're entering into the phase two, which is the wholesale. And we're actually entering into the clinical um, setting. And I'll speak more about that in just a little bit. So how do we reach our customers? Well, we've tried all sorts of different ways, right? We have tried the spectrum. The top three ways for our company is first, social media. Social media is powerful. From Facebook to Instagram to Pinterest, you name it, they're there, all right? The second thing, Google, right? Where do you go to shop? Where do you go to find anything? It is Google. It's our number one thing. I mean, there's Bing, there's other things, but Google is our number one platform that we can reach a new audience. The last one is our magazine ads. Um, we've done really well in magazine ads. We were just on the cover of Fine Lifestyles as well. These magazine ads do really well for us as well. We have also tried television, radio, even billboards. Um, but these are the top three that funnel into our email campaign, which has our highest conversion. All right, so our journey, well, we've had a fun one. We have been really honored and we've been really blessed. And so I know there's a lot on here. I'm not gonna take you through each one. I'm just gonna take you year through year. We became a company in 2018. As Christina said, we tested our BioVarex for a year. We were selling our other products on the side to make money to fund this. But we hadn't launched BioVarex until late 2019 and we actually launched it on Black Friday. It had such a successful launch. We were actually invited early 20, uh, 20, early 2020 to the Sundance Film Festival gifting suites. And so the Eco Lux Lounge um, 
uh, heard about us through Jeremiah Bitsui, who is a local actor here. We were referred, we went through an interview process, we were selected. And so we went, it went so well at the Sundance Film Festival, they said, come back for the Oscars. And so we were able to come back for the Oscars and you guys, what a ride, <laughs> what a ride for just launching, right? And so we were able to get this national exposure. And then what happened, everyone? COVID, yes. <laughs> it was good, it was good. However, it did make us pivot. And so in 2020, we pivoted. Like I said, we did e-commerce. We stayed alive, we stayed strong. We did so well that we were invited at the end of 2020 to be interviewed by Kathy Ireland on her show, Modern Living. We really are disrupting the skincare market because we have something new. Not only do we have something new, it works. It actually gives people the results that we're all craving. So 2021, like I said, the spectrum, how do we actually get customers? Okay, we have the trust with the media. We have the big national things. Well, how do we get the people to pay? 2021 was that year where we actually tried the whole spectrum. Like I had said earlier, we tried all avenues and the top three is what kind of shuffled out of that. So that was in 2021. We um, showed that we were able to um, get repeat customers. We were able to be so successful. We have, I think, between a 60 to 80, 60 to 80 percent return customer rate. That's huge. In cosmetics, in skincare, yeah. that's huge. So we can prove that we have a product and that customers want it and they will return to buy it. So what does that mean in 2022? What have we been doing? We've been rebranding. As I said, we're going into our second phase, which is wholesale. So clinical settings want us, dermatologists, estheticians, um, med spas, even cosmetic dentistry are asking to not only have us in their retail space, but to have us in their back bar. What is a back bar? It means that products they use with their treatments, all right? So we are already in facial treatments. We are in anti-aging treatments. We're gonna be in the um, dermatology, but we have to do a whole rebrand. So in 2022, that is what we have been doing. We have been rebranding. So that's our journey so far. And then that comes to what's our challenge right now? Well, in 2022, it takes a lot to get from this to this, a lot. I mean, it is more than we ever realized. We're a year in the making and this is where we're at. So what does that mean as far as the update and what we'd love to ask from you guys? I'm gonna go ahead and give it over to you. Okay, so Katie showed that we're moving from this very kind of apothecary, farmer's market look, look <clears throat> into this fancy new clinical sleek look. And at first we thought, okay, just slap a new label on and that's oh, all it takes. I'm just <laughs> and the scientists. Yeah. That kind of so that's not all it takes. It takes graphic designers, it takes package designers, it takes upfront manufacturing of a thousand of each of seven products. And all of that is a lot of upfront cost. And so that was a big challenge for us. Um, we had enough to cover some of that cost but not all of it. So in order to address that challenge, we've started a Kickstarter campaign. So this was the campaign on the very first day, 29 days left before we raised any. I think we've raised about 18% of our goal right now. We have, I think, <clears throat> 21 days left. And so that's what we want advice from this community. We wanna know who of you have run Kickstarter campaigns who actually reached their goal and how did you get there? Some of these Kickstarter campaigns, I look online and they've reached like a thousand percent of their goal. If you were one of those people, we want to talk to you. Yeah, um, because yes. we kind of, we sent it out to our followers, we put it on our social media, we got to that plateau and now what? How do we get it out to more people in the next 22 days? so that we can reach our goal. Because one of the things about Kickstarter is, if you don't reach your goal, you don't get any of it. So we really need to reach that in order to make this happen. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for allowing us to give an update on our company. It's been an honor and we would love to gain any insight that you guys might have. Yeah. So we're gonna take a break from the Zoom. If you'd like to ask a question here, you form a line. Don't Get to introduce yourself. Any questions? <laughs> Perfect. Take 
Yeah, we'll also take questions from people online. I know we've got Sonia. We're starting to queue online. So, so many things. This is just fantastic. Um, boy, oh, I ran over here. I forgot what I mean, there's just so many different parts of it. I, I'm wondering, like, in this, maybe this most recent year, when you're starting to think about the rebrand, I mean, it looks really, really good. What were some of the, I don't know, the things that you've learned that kind of turned that around for you, that convinced you that you needed to kind of rebrand in order to reach this, this new set? And then maybe what was one or two of the first things you did in order to head down that road? That makes sense. So first, um, we were told <laughs> <laughs> we will. We want you. We don't want this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like this is not going to sit in my it, our dermatologist. We have a great um, certified dermatologist who sits on our board, Dr. Siraj Reddy, and he has been instrumental on how to get into that clinical setting. And he said there is no way that something that looks mm -hmm. like this is going to be visually appealing to my demographic. However. I want what's in the bottle. <laughs> I want what's in there. So you have to take it from this and you have to make it match with Dermalogica, Skin SkinCeuticals, all of those national brands that are already sitting in the dermatologist office. So we said, absolutely. And when we heard it, not just from him, we heard yeah. it time and time again. Yes, we want you. Change your packaging. Oh, we'd love to have you. Change your packaging. You know, and they said it just... It doesn't fit with aesthetics of what you're trying to get into. So that's the first thing. It was right when the market subtle. tells you what they want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah up front to personal, you know? And so that was the first thing. What was the second again? You know, I mean, I think that I, let's, let's head on to the other okay. questions. I think that's perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, perfect. Come on, everybody. Get on, Julie. Get on, Mike. Everybody can see you. Oh, oh yeah, they need to say that here, you too. Okay, okay. sorry. Let's get over. Let's see about I was just wanting to be manufacturer every in Albuquerque. In Santa Fe. In Santa, Santa Fe, Fe or okay. Land. Okay. And then um, I was also wondering, do you have any locations that you, like any retail locations that are just branded as you? Not just branded as us, but we're in esthetician clinics, um, some med spas. Katie, do you want to talk about which ones? Yeah. So we're currently um, in Amethyst Mind Body Synergy which is located on the east side. We're used in the treatment center as well as the retail. And then we're also in uh, Monet's Skin, which is in Old Town. She has a shop and we're in her retail space as well as has um, a k, &K anti-aging facial where it's only using our products along with other treatments that she has, like light therapy, um, and, you know, things. I have, I have a bunch of people that I can get with. I work with a bunch of like, small businesses that I can see you sort of synergizing with yeah. and I really like it that you're using the Kickstarter to sort of move through the mm -hmm. old old products. So I saw that the rewards for pledging oh, you saw are that? old branded products. Yes. I think that that's a great way to move. Yes, because we have some inventory. inventory to yeah. Before, yeah. <laughs> so there's my card um, and, and I will touch base with you about um getting you some people. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Hi. I'm Mia Peterson. I am the executive director for the New Mexico Tech Council. So we live here um, at Fat Pipe, and I'm an anti aging junkie. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you doing? So, um, having worked in the retail industry for many years, uh, not too long ago, I think it's great that you're. Uh, not doing a freestanding because that's so challenging in this day and age. It's great that you're branding, right? Um, so that just be my two cents, not being a super expert, but I think that's great. And um, with the Kickstarter, I, I'm very intrigued by it. I've never done a campaign myself, but what I have noticed works really well is if there's some incentive, right? And so I had a coworker who did one, they were creating a custom board game. And so four investors at each level, they kind of got like a custom swag or obviously a copy of the game. And so I was wondering um, if you can kind of speak to what are those benefits of being a part of being an investor on Kickstarter? Yeah, so really it's just pledging. And so when you pledge, let's say $25, the first level is our old repair serum. Okay, so this is what you'd be getting. And so you, the pledge starts at $25. You can pledge 30 or whatever, but you don't actually have to pay for it until it's 
fully funded. Gotcha. And then it's actually then taken, it's a warning, you know, you will be, um, you know, the $30 will now be taken out of your account. You will be receiving the repairs. So that's how we start. Um, like she had mentioned before, um, we have different levels from the old brand all the way up to $500 for both brands, ultimate collections, crystal rollers, things like that. So there's all the products that you have from $25 to 50, all the way up to 500. So you're given products for any pledge and you are definitely saving a whole bunch of money yes. buying it. And so um, it's guaranteed in December. So it's a great time to actually get Christmas presents stocked up and get whether that's the old brand or the new. We are with the new brand bringing out two new products, our sun, zinc oxide sun shield, as well as a jojoba um, bead scrub and mask. And so those are some new items for you as well. Great. And I came in late, so I'm really sorry if you already covered this. Oh, no. um, thanks for recapping it. Good luck. Thank yeah, we'll so check much. it out. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. and will there be a link share? Uh, we have a kicks. Yeah, we have um, kicks uh, QR code. Uh, as Perfect. mentioned before, we have something as well. If anybody wants to either scan it or take it, we have a QR code for our Kickstarter as well as our website. Great. Let's go to Sonia online, and then we'll go back to the line here. Sonia, go ahead and ask your question or make your comment. All right, I'll try to make this quick because uh, Kickstarters, those sort of things are my are my jam. <laughs> so, um, let me start with the fact that I am obviously I love your products. I buy your products. I had no idea you had a Kickstarter going. So, if you sent emails out to your peeps, I I either didn't read it or I think the title, the subject line has to be very specific, like get a deal on BioVerix. Like okay. not necessarily the title shouldn't be, we have a Kickstarter. The title should be get a deal on BioVerix. Here's a link to the Kickstarter. Um, also your website. So if I, I'm ready to order my next version of products, I just went to your website. I don't see anything about the Kickstarter. That should be at the top of your page. Okay. Um, and last thing, I'll, <laughs> last thing I'll say is video. You need some videos in your Kickstarter. So you could use this video um, once, you know, you can download it from Facebook or whatever. You could load this or just the two of you chatting about the products and at least one um, uh, a testimonial video from one of your uh, customers. So those that's all I got right now. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. Sonia. Uh, hi everyone. I'm Jeff Bargell. I'm the program director for all the entrepreneurship programs at CNM, and, um, and including Activate NM and Hyperspace Challenge and a few others. But uh, I have tried your product before. It smells great. Felt good. Uh, the serum stuff. I think I just got a little a little sample vial. It's lasted me a long time. Um, <laughs> but uh, my question is: so you're trying to do the the refresh, the rebrand because your potential customer is telling you that. Have you approached them about funding? This rebrand, either through um, pre-orders or some sort of licensing deal, or not like maybe not licensing, but like um, a, a referral deal or some sort of other deal to have your customer fund this rebranding. So we haven't necessarily done that now, and I mean, even as simple as taking our Kickstarter to them might be helpful, but then also a step above that—that's a great idea. Yeah, they're really buying in. Yeah. Get them to get them to get them to pre-order. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah, great idea. Uh, Miriam, you're up next. Oh my God, I love that last idea so much. Um, and Sonia's ideas were really good too. It's really important to repeat. So, um, in addition to emailing the list you already have, do you have a whole funnel built out for contacting the? Uh -huh the email list over and over and over, because I know one of the companies that I've done a couple different Kickstarters with, um, and I'll put their name in the thing so you could see what they do, but they did a whole like pre-launch <clears throat> 10 or 12 email sequence that got me very excited. And it was like a teaser. And then they reminded me every day for the first week of the thing. So sometimes people just aren't ready to buy or they want to look at it more closely. You have to remind them over and over. I just want to make sure you're you're considering that. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great idea. We have that one email planned, but I think you're right. We'll need to what email? Over and over. Yeah, that's going to go to the spam or to the bottom of the list of checkout later. 
Um, the fact that you got 18% off one email is fantastic. So keep going, do more. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Hi, David Murphy with Core Visual. Um, I'm like a lot of Gen X dudes. I don't think about my skin or what it looks like, but I know this is like an older, and I, I see this in my dad, especially like if, you, if you're working with your hands, in my case, I'm schlepping a lot of gear. If I bump into anything now, it's a lot easier that my skin is going to rip and tear and bleed. My dad's skin is like paper. And so do your products, is it able to actually like accumulate a thicker layer of skin? Literally, is that, is that what it is? So um, like on our advertising, we can't say that it really helps with wound healing because the FDA will come and smash us with a hammer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we have tried it on several different like wound healing, especially when people get um, lesions removed. This will help the wound healing process happen faster. We've tried it on burns and that works really well. Um, at the moment, we're just not ready to go through that whole FDA um, type of approval right now. So we don't market it for that. But yes, this molecule is absolutely amazing for those types. I was gonna say it because if that's the case, I can imagine some of the ads that I get targeted with, it's like okay. Dr. Squatch Soap, you know, and they're these really funny, uh -huh. totally geared to guys kind of ads, but it's like, like when the guys talk about so and somehow this ad will grab you. So if, if your product goes in that direction or you have a niche market for like, man, is your skin thin and you're, 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 you know, it's ripping like wallpaper, you know, how to the kind of kitschy way to do it, but that would be a cool market too. Because I I totally do that because I need to do something preemptive now so I don't yes. get to my dad's age and have the same problems. Yeah. Well, thank, well, thank, you. You. thank you. We appreciate that. that. I'm actually using it on a scar after surgery in two months. My scar looks so good yes mm -hmm. yes and People that's exactly know. why dermatologists want us is because after they're doing those procedures especially if it's cancerous or precancerous things like that and they have to go pretty deep we are part of that aftercare product line and so it really is able to do some phenomenal phenomenal things for the skin hi i'm dr norm with dr norm's connections.com and my business is dementia prevention so it has nothing to do with skin okay. however uh i've been in a large organization and company for about 25 years. And I see that there's a huge trend. You may not want to do this because your niche is very narrow. But there's a huge trend in affiliate marketing where you get other people who love your brand. They become raving fans. They get a small commission for sharing your stuff without building a huge network. It's just you know, like in doctor's offices, if some patients were to start using it, then they were rewarded for sharing it with other people. Just a real simple one layer affiliate program. Have you considered that for expanding it rapidly? And it may not be one, what you want to do because it's such a narrow niche. So we have started doing that with influencers on Instagram. So if we track their uh, discount codes and for every product they sell, they get a certain commission. Um, we haven't necessarily expanded that to anyone outside of the Instagram world, but we do have that set up. So um, that is something we'd be interested in. Next question, real quick. Amazon. We're on Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Have you thought about doing we that? Are we are currently on Amazon. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yes. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Great question. Let's go back to Zoom. Bill, it's your turn. You have a comment? Hi. Hi, ladies. Um, I remember you two or three years ago. One of my first presentations I saw at One Million Cups. Glad to see you're still around. The comment that um, you made just before the last question, um, in response to what Lisa said about scars, removing scars, and you're using it. I didn't hear much about that at all in your presentation. Maybe I, I missed it, but I was listening. So I heard about all the good things you've got. I've heard about your secret formula, for want of a better word, in it. You need to push those two things a little bit harder. Your secret forma, formula, and not just the fact that it's going to um, help with women's beauty, men's beauty as well, I guess, but that it helps with uh, post-surgery, I would imagine something like that. You've got to push that because um, I think that's, when, when um, you said about it helps remove uh, cancer operation or scars, um, I, to me, that just went bang. That's something that you should put out there. That's got to be at the forefront. 
Thank you, yeah. Phil. So one of the things um, I want to point out is that we are going through a website redesign as well. And so on that website redesign, it's going to be modeling then that upgrade. So it really is going to be speaking to the wholesale clients as well. And so on that, we are able to again, be very careful on how we approach it because we do have to fall under the cosmetic umbrella. That is something that we have to fall under, but it is something that we will absolutely be putting on our new website. So thank you, Phil, for that. It's really appreciated. Yeah, and in our world, it's kind of, it's a real fine line yes. between what we can claim between saying this is a cosmetic application or this is a medical application. And if we just go right over that line, then the FDA will write us a letter and tell us we have to stop selling. So we have to just walk that line very carefully. Hi, Hi. So, um, I'm Dr. Jessica Troy, and I'm actually an SEO copywriter, um, but I have kind of two questions. Um, first, you were talking about how um, your customers love it because of being all natural and like your ingredients and things like that. Um, and I guess these are kind of tangentially related. Um, with a lot of different companies that all buy stuff from, they have some kind of like no, um, no packaging kind of thing so that you don't have any waste. And I know a lot of people who are into natural ingredients and all that stuff also don't want to create excess waste. So do you guys have a program for recycling your bottles or any kind of thing that you can exchange or uh, like I'm thinking like Lush Cosmetics, they can, you can bring in your pots for different skincare stuff and like exchange them. Right. So that's a great question. And yes, we absolutely fall into that sustainable category. Um, it was something that was extremely important to me when we first became a brand. Um, it was like, oh my gosh, we have to do our part. We have to be socially aware. We have to be socially conscious. And so as you can see, um, all of our products are in recyclable or reusable packaging. Currently on our upgrade, it will be the same thing. It will be all recyclable. Um, or reusable. Um, currently, we have everything in a burlap bag. And so we have no, currently, no secondary packaging. And so again, it's that reuse that burlap bag, you know, regift it, do whatever you need. And then we have um, recycled paper that is put in with the instructions as well. However, <laughs> we are forced to do secondary packaging as we move into the clinical setting. We can't get around it. And I know Lush is a great brand and it has its storefront that you can bring in. We are not Lush. We do not have a storefront. We yes. do not have this ability yes. yet. Thank you. <laughs> we do not have this ability yet to get, give it back to our customers. And so all over, we say reuse, recycle, um, reduce, right? The, you know, what we want. And so the second ones, even though it will have uh, secondary packaging, it will all be recyclable. So we will still fit into that sustainable model. So then my second question kind of still on the same market issue. Um, you, the look you have now is kind of, or this old look is kind of rustic. And I know that probably works well in like farmer's markets and like even with rail yards and things like that. Do you think there's going to be any issue with customers who really like the rustic look and don't want to go into that like mm -hmm. clinical look for things that kind of blends into everything else. I, I know I like that kind of look personally. <laughs> yeah. I know doctors are all like, no, we can't do rustic yeah. stuff. We have to do clinical stuff. Yeah. Um, but I just wonder if that you think that might affect you any customer base. So we have um, allowed our customers be, to be part of the journey. And so one of the things that we have actually taken our customers with us to the journey. And so we're screaming out loud, like, look at what we're doing. Look at what we're doing. What are your insights? What do you think about this logo? What do you guys think about this packaging? And so it really is taking them to be part of our journey. So then when we do come over to the clinical setting, they're going, yes, you're sense. there. You yeah. did it. Congratulations. And they are part of the upgrade. They are part of it. And that's really important to us because our customers are our, our company. And it's really important. I can't even tell you how much customer service is important to us. And so we do value what our customer says. And if anything, we want them to make us excited for us. And again, they love what's in it. <laughs> they love what's in it. And our pricing isn't going to change. Our, our, um, it will because our sizes are changing, but we're really conscious about the pricing and what's in it. And I think that hopefully they'll be excited. And if we do lose some along the way, then um, that's, you know, part of the retail. journey as well. <laughs> that's, that's retail. Thank you. All right. Great All right. questions. We'll take so, the thank last you. two people as questions and then we'll yeah. wrap it up. First, I want to comment and then a question. Yes. The comment is just, I hope that you're going after something like TikTok videos too, mm -hmm. because those are kind of like the right format for this. Entry. Second thing. <laughs> okay. So second thing is, I mean, I, mean, I, I love your product. I love what you're doing. I just, yeah, I was here before. It's great. 
I don't understand the Kickstarter because you're selling off. It sounds so maybe it's just what I heard. Is you're kind of using the Kickstarter to sell off your old stock, and then um, as as a way of funding your new stock. And why through Kickstarting did you feel like that was the the route? And maybe that would help us kind of think about that thought yeah. process. So it's just <laughs> parallel. So we're still selling our old product online. But we found a very strict correlation between the amount we spend on advertising and the amount that we bring back. And so that margin, considering the amount that we need to spend on advertising in the way we've been doing it, isn't going to give us that big lump sum. Because it really is a huge <laughs> lump sum that we need up front. And we'd have to spend a ton on advertising. And it's just not going to equal the big lump that we need. And so, so that's why it's the Kickstarter. So the idea is, is that Kickstarter is kind of like a big step of, of marketing and that they help somehow. Or... So it's and free. So it's free. So to be part of the Kickstarter, you only pay if you get funded. And so it's a free way of advertising, not just locally, but nationally. I mean, we have China looking at us. We have Australia looking at us. And so we're seeing these bigger countries now looking at us because of Kickstarter, because Kickstarter is that national campaign level. And so we're getting more eyes in different ways, while also still technically being free advertisement yeah. right now. And so Kickstarter is a different audience. Right. Yes. We reach very specific types of people, demographics on Facebook, on Instagram, our typical um, social media avenues that do well for us. And that's more of an older, that's more of a woman. Kickstarter is a whole different entrepreneur, younger type of demographic. And I think reaching those two at the same time is going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess I would think, okay, so in some, on one hand then, like using your current customers to advertise them to kiss Kickstart doesn't help you so much because you're just selling product. However, it might help you because it might, if you could accelerate your sales on your Kickstart, your pledges, mm -hmm. and push you through it, maybe, you know, people do look at momentum as yeah. a way of understanding when to buy things. Exactly. And yeah. if all of a sudden you get a bunch of momentum on Kickstarter, that might push the other Yes, and the Kickstarter will actually feature some of the campaigns that are getting a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully we can push that with our emails, get momentum, get featured on Kickstarter for free, and then get those Kickstarter people that frequent that site and look for projects. But I, I would look at going after your current customers yeah. to move them to Kickstarter to okay. as a momentum deal, right. not as a getting more products sold. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Last question. Um, first of all, I was going to ask about the pricing. So, so the sizes went up, so the pricing is going to go up a little bit, but it's about the same. Yeah, it starts at 22, and then our buyer over sells for 120. And then my, my last question, which, which is a subject um, near and dear to my heart, is have you ever thought of um, marketing it for tattoo aftercare? Uh, the vitamin E oh. would not be a good um, mix because vitamin E will actually take out the ink. And so I would uh, not recommend uh, uh, for the after, after tattoo. Now, now um, for, for when it's actually put in and it's like in the skin and it's been there for a while, our body serum is great to rehydrate the skin and bring out the color. Okay. However, I would not recommend any of our products for the first six months after getting a tattoo because it will pull up the ink. However, after that six month window, it should be, um, you know, set in enough where our body serum is an excellent rehydrator as well as a color enhancer. Because that's, that's another market then because, yes. they, you know, they fade over time and yes. people are looking to yes. rehydrate them, kind of brighten yes. them up a little Absolutely. bit. So, but it would probably require a different mm -hmm. packaging for that demographic. Yeah. I just thought I'd ask Thank you. you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things I just want to point out that kind of was mentioned throughout is like, um, like, oh, you could use it for this. Oh, I heard you could use it for this. You guys, we are able to use it for multiple things. There are so many things that it's able to do. Financially, we had to pick one. We had to pick one and we had to say, this is what we're going to spend money on. This is the message we're going to get across because we are a new product. We are a new company. There is a learning curve of what our BioVarex is able, even able to do. I mean, you guys said like BioVarex and still, you know, not understanding it. That's because it takes a lot of education. So we really did have to focus on one thing, but it's able to do stretch marks, acne scars, scarring, you know, it's able to do so much. And as we get bigger, we'll be able to branch out. Um, and I do want to mention is for men as well. It's for skin. 
it is for skin and skin alone. And that covers all humans. And so that's something that I want to emphasize as well, because I don't think I said that as well about, you know, it does go for men. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, we have two last questions. First of all, red or green? Blue Christmas. <laughs> red. Red. <laughs> and then what's the one thing that this community can do for you? Um, I think anyone who's had experience with Kickstarter, if we could just sit down with you and see how you've made this successful. Um, we really appreciate the ideas that you guys have brought and maybe just dig in a little bit deeper to help us get that. Is there anything that you can? Um, I would just like your energy. I mean, yeah. really, I mean, and whatever that might look like, I think that might be valuable. So if you guys could, you know, just put energy, even just by talking, breathing, supporting, looking mm -hmm. at it, you know, that's all I ask for each and every one of you, because that can move mountains. Great. Round of applause. Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Great. Thank great. you. Thank Thank you. Everyone, I've got a couple things. So I'll also say I didn't uh, put this in the text online, but uh, scooting over here. If you've got good news, if you're online, go ahead and let us know in the chat so we can bring you up on stage. Same thing. If you've got a little, just even something super small. Sometimes the smallest things can be the most invaluable. Go ahead and shoot form a little bit of a line, and I will do a very quick version of. Here's a couple of things that are happening in town. Um, you know, I got this. Not right last time. Barbara's session tomorrow if you're fat pipe. Can you both maybe tell me just 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 a minute on that, Why real quick Barbara to start off? Yeah. And there's also well, let's see a Native American leadership uh, um, webinar that's taking place. I want to say earlier in the morning uh, that's that's available online as well. But those are both tomorrow. Yeah, Barbara, what's what's going on tomorrow? You're coming yeah. here. How many of you are in business or not sure or and go out and and. Talking to people in the business just isn't coming back. You're yeah. not getting the traction you want. Well, I'm doing a, a workshop tomorrow called Authentic Communication. And I believe that when you walk out, you're going to have some tools in your belt that you go, oh my goodness, if I just do this, this is going to give me more traction. So it's about communication, authentic communications. It's a brown bag lunch. So bring your lunch with you. Jason and I will bring cookies. It was his request, and I keep saying that. Hopefully. I'm on assignment for Jen tomorrow. So oh, I'm man. Does that mean I don't need to bring cookies? <laughs> Starts <laughs> at 11.30. Why yeah. 11.30 to 1 o'clock. Please join us. Excellent. Thank you. So a couple more events just to, to jump in on that. So let's see. The New Mexico Business and Economic Summit with uh, University of New Mexico. Uh, it's featuring right to start. That is on 26 October. There's a ton of different events that are happening in November with Global Entrepreneurship Week. I know... Uh, Jeff and CNM Ingenuity, you've got like at least two major events and then you know 17 or smaller events. <laughs> um, so there's a lot that's coming in November. I'm not gonna hit those right now, but let's hear some good news. Jen. Yes. Hello, good morning. I am Jen Molinix with Ingenuity Venture Fund, and I am excited to share some good news about a really great startup here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. They operate out of um, the Bioscience Center Circular Genomics, many of whom had the opportunity to watch Alex Hafez, who's the president and co-founder of Circular Genomics, present at One Million Cups a few weeks ago. They were out of hundreds of applicants. They were one of 20 chosen to present yesterday at TechCrunch, uh, the Constructor Conference 2023. We don't know the results yet, but it is a fabulous fabulous um, opportunity for them. And we're so excited for Circular Genomics. Could it result in funding? Like uh, there is a, a prize of $100,000. And then of course the investment opportunity, the investors who are there at TechCrunch. It's just a really, really exciting opportunity. Again, hundreds of applicants narrowed down to 20. And these are the you know, leading technologies in robotics, green energy, um, biomedical and for them to be selected as a finalist is like a really, really huge. Yes, the results. Sonia, I'll get to you, don't worry. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Scott Adams. I am a software engineer. I work here out of that pipe, but I'm fully remote. Um, I work for Trek based in Wisconsin, like the bicycle manufacturing company. 
But I wanted to give a quick shout out to a couple of events that we have coming up here at Fat Pipe um, in early November. Um, I'm going to be helping to host a Google developer meetup. So if you know anyone within like the tech coding uh, software engineering space that's interested in community engagement, we're starting a couple of different initiatives in Albuquerque or kind of refreshing a few that went dormant during COVID. So Lisa graciously is letting us um, host one of our first events here um, at FabPipe on November 3rd to Thursday. And we're going to be kind of in that back space. And then the following week is also a hackathon hack happening, hackening <laughs> at um, RSI. That's like a, a partnership between Women Who Code and RSI, which um, of course is a local company here in Albuquerque, but has branches throughout the United States. So it's actually a virtual event. So again, if you know people that are interested in tech coming out of the boot camps, et cetera, um, I'm happy to help connect them with happenings here um, in Albuquerque. Thank nice. you so much. Thanks, Yar. Everyone again, Jeff Bargell again. Um, so Eric didn't want to mention it, but I, I do want to mention it. So Activate NM is having Startup Fiesta and Showcase on November 10th at the Stimulus Center downtown. So we are looking for 15 small businesses from New Mexico that will all get to do a micro pitch of one minute. Plus they will get a table to uh, be there to mingle with all of us. Uh, we'll have drinks and food and all that sort of stuff. So again, it's another post COVID event. Just get all, all of us together and mingling again. So look, hope to see everybody there. And if you know anybody, one minute pitches. So Thanks, thank you. Jeff. Hey Jeff. Wait, where do we hold on? Hold on one second. Where do we find out more about that event? Uh, go to activatenm.com uh, slash events. Thank and you. And then look for startup fiesta. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Paul Sauter, founder and chief scientific officer of Equacy. So you remember at the beginning of August, I gave a talk. I said we needed some solid science to get some publications out the door. We're gonna take something easy and we're gonna put it across the line. And people said, what are you going to do about that? I said, at the end of August, I'm going to Kansas and Missouri. We spent a lot of time and money finding the perfect horse to do this assay on. We found it. Now, the other people on the team said, you shouldn't have an expectation going into an experiment. And I said, that's ridiculous. It turns out we have the assay results back and the results from the affected horse exactly mimic the um, assay results from human patients with similar disorders. So that is going to be the foundation of probably our first peer reviewed publication. And as much fun as it is to share that with all of you, because you've been with me on the whole journey, I will have an opportunity next month to share it with some scientists. The genetics department at the University of Washington from which I graduated has become the genome sciences department. And they did that 20 years ago. They're celebrating their 20th anniversary next month by having Francis Collins, first director of the National Human Genome Research Institute and current director of the National Institutes of Health, George Church, the most famous scientist you've never heard of, and other <laughs> luminaries are going to give, uh, give talks on the big day. The next day, uh, I was invited to give a talk on our work at Equiseek, and I'll be very happy to do it in front of that stellar audience. And thanks to all of you for uh, all the help you've given me along the way. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Michelle and I work for Noventum Custom Software for web development, but my special news is a little bit personal. I have a friend that lives in Arizona and I'm not going to say her name because she didn't tell her family yet, but she just said to me in confidence that she's going to have a baby. Yay! So uh, they're going to find out if it's a boy or a girl next week. Yay! Good news. Thank you. <laughs> More good news. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Jenny Rosberg. I am an occupational therapist. And after three years of owning a building, small explosion leading to a fire, COVID, and a whole lot of other construction issues, I am finally ready to open my own occupational therapy clinic. It's located near downtown in Old Town. Um, Really excited about it. I'm starting to ask for referrals from doctors as of yesterday. So I'm back at Fat Pipe after a couple of years. I'm happy to be here. Sounds like we need you to apply for that. Yes. I might. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Sonia, your turn. Let's hear you. All right. I have two good news things. Um, number one, my podcast. I've only I'm only on episode 23, and it's already hit the top 50% of all podcasts. And it just hit Apple's podcast rating list at number 138. So I'm like, holy crap. 
Um, and the the second thing is I will be presenting at we at the we conference that's out of Arrowhead Center. Um, that's a women's entrepreneurial conference, and I'll 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 share the link uh, in the Zoom. That's November seventeenth. Sorry. <laughs> Bill, real quickly, what's your shout out? Hi, just wanted to follow up on last week's um, presentation with um, Timeless Memories, those people. Um, I offered them a half hour session and we're gonna be doing that today at one o'clock. Nice, they're here today. So that's kind, of, uh, that's kind of cool. Very cool, that's great news. Hey Paul, you wanna, you wanna help us wrap things up? Uh, well, that was really an exciting presentation today and thanks for all the good news and let's see if we can top that next week go out and do some things that move the needle and uh let's hear some more good news about entrepreneurship in new mexico next week see you all in a week bye <laughs>